Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk. We're at the tail end of the year, and it's been a while since I did a State of the Monk style of video. In fact, I haven't done that kind of thing in years, or anything like a vlog in that sense. So this is my attempt to remedy that. I will note I'm going a little bit off the cuff and not scripting this in my usual style, because I don't think it warrants it. That said, I do have a few bullet points that I have in front of me that I'm going to be using to go through this, just to organize my thoughts a little bit. So, let's start with one of the big ones for me, and that was the completion of FF Legend, or at least the text. At the time of this recording, it's going through editing passes, and eventually it's going to go through graphic design. This is intended to be the first of hopefully several TTRPG design projects that I'll eventually put up on either my own site, when I get a site made, or put it up on something like itch.io. The eventual plan is to hopefully go legit and put something on itch or drive through RPG for people to actually spend money on. It's been a long transition, but I think I'm starting to get the hang of what I'd want to do with that kind of thing. Now, when it comes to collabs with others, the next item on my list, I've certainly expanded upon doing that this year. There's been a few more that I've done aside from just the usual review setup, whether it be bringing Zan on to talk with a certain guest, or going on other people's shows, like my collabs with The Red Room, the sort of collab with On The Rise, which was a Emberwind-themed podcast that ended up going through a soft reset after the initial recording that we did, which is why I was able to get permission to upload that thing on my channel. Uh, there's one that's upcoming with Homie and the Dude, and later this month, at the time of this recording, I'll be doing one with Diogo Noguera. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. And I do hope to collab with plenty others within the TTRPG space, and even just the gaming space. I've got a few that I have in mind. But, <sighs> I suppose I should get to the elephant in the room. Let's talk about Legion of Myth. So if you didn't see the post that I did a while back, I was on one episode of their Some Rando RPG stream along with Zan. Things got off the rails very, very, very quickly, and it felt like we were being ambushed. Regardless if that was the intent, that's how things came off. Two people involved were very condescending. or One of them was... One of those two, I should say, was unnecessarily aggressive. And of course, shortly after a little bit of back and forth in the Discord server, I decided that this crowd was not for me. They were not what I thought they were. And I left. And I put up that post on my YouTube channel going into the events from my perspective and just explaining why I will not be going back. Now, of course, in the response, there was the whole thing of the drinking, which Max had mentioned to me, which I don't care. There was also the whole, oh, you you guys should have known better, this is how we do things, which... There were three weeks between when the whole thing was initially scheduled and when the show actually happened. That's three weeks that either of us could have been briefed, and it shouldn't be on me to research that kind of thing in advance, and it definitely shouldn't be on Zans. We have our own, th we have our own thing, and it's their show, they should have let us know in advance. Of course, after I posted that thing, then Ash... Came, came across it, nowadays going by Gelatinous Rube. He had his own thing that apparently spiraled out because then Max messaged me after the fact. Barring one screenshot, I don't know what happened in the server. I only know from what Max had said. I don't really care what happened. And yes, Rube, a.k.a. Ash of Creativity, or whatever he wants to call himself these days, Oh, can he be an asshole? Yeah, but he's also my friend. And I will never take for granted the fact that he was willing to go to bat for me. Him and I may disagree on some things, a lot of things, but neither of us have had a cross word with each other because we're professionals. To some degree, at the very least. But the big reason that I did the things that I did when it came to that was... It became very clear to me that that is a crowd that needs an enemy to fight. Sometimes that enemy is people who are politically contentious. Sometimes it's people who they think 
don't have the right takes. But they need that enemy to fight, otherwise they can't define themselves, at least from my perspective. That goes counter to the approach that I've tried to take with the temple for almost 10 years now. So I was like, yeah, I'm out. I'm not going to be treated as you guys' punching bag. In spite of that, the incident is not going to deter me from looking around for other people to collaborate with. Whether it be interviews on my channel or being on somebody else's show to talk about the projects I've been working on or the like. Hell, I was recent on, on the Geeky Gamer podcast and had a very productive discussion about role-playing, along with a whole lot of other things. Yeah, it got a little chaotic, but it was the fun kind of chaotic. I didn't feel like I was in an inquisition. So, moving on from that, let's talk about interviews. Now, I have done over 100 interviews this year. And I think one of the big things that I take away out of this is the interviews getting me a job working with Lost Lorn as part of their media division, which is something I never thought I'd be doing in a million years. I'd never even thought that I'd be talking to the guy behind Vampire the Masquerade in a million years, and yet that's happened on multiple occasions now. Obviously, one of the big things that happened away from the usual habits is bringing on Zan for the occasional interv interview, which isn't something I plan on making a habit. I only intend on doing that in very specific circumstances, usually if it's some sort of tie that he already has. Now, unfortunately, the majority of my interviews have been with TTRPG developers, when in previous years I had also done interviews with actors and with comic book creators and the like. I'd like to try and address that going forward. It's just that... One of them is easier to get in contact with than the others. Also, it depends on what's being kickstarted and what I can actually get access to. Because this is not meant to be a tabletop exclusive channel. This is meant to be a things I happen to like channel. It's just tabletop is a big passion of mine, so that's going to get a lot of attention. So that brings me to the next topic, the Valley of the Judged. The big change with that was, of course, expanding with Monarch on Thursdays. So I'm doing two a week, one with Monarch and the other with Xanatrix. The three-in-one system that we've done has allowed me to better focus when it comes to the mix of full seasons and one-shots, especially since I ended up going through my library and grabbing a bunch of things that might make for future seasons or future one-shots. Sometimes I've had to call an audible, and one of the future ones I'm going to be doing is is based on a promise that I made a while back, and I always keep my word on these kind of things. And of course, the big thing throughout all of this has been us getting an exclusive look at Planetbound. Now, obviously, Jeremy Jack is a longtime friend of the channel, and has been on multiple times, and I and I even had him on when it came to the early stage of Planet Bound and interviewed him around that time. He's one of the many people that I always consider myself blessed to have within the temple. And he's basically become the unofficial hype man for the temple on multiple occasions. But still, the fact that we were able to get an exclusive first look at the rule set, as well as contribute to improved versions of said rule set, is something that I will always see as a blessing. I never want to take that kind of thing for granted, and things like that end up validating me in the fact that I believe I'm on the right path. So, I should also talk about the Parliament of Geeks. So this year we did seven episodes, obviously Parliament is going to be the show with the fewest amount of episodes. The big change that ended up happening this year, aside from doing it more seriously, is developing a system, developing what we're going to cover and what we're not going to cover, implementing a wheel system, so I'm not just scrambling about to find something that'd fit, as well as the fact that we have the three-week rule, which means that we can relatively cover these kind of things quickly. It is a bit unfortunate that the plan to do an episode that was a special covering Common Rider Geats was never able to materialize because of scheduling issues. But that was a non-standard episode, so I'm not going to lose too much sleep out of it. I do think one thing I'd like to improve upon is not spending as much time doing 
essentially a dramatic reading of the story and focusing more on our take with the anime as a whole and obviously less on just trying to narrate the whole thing. I mean, I certainly like the descriptors that we give to things, but I do think it takes up a bit of time compared to the final thoughts and all that. It's a bit of a habit I'm trying to shake out of. I just don't know what the solution is going to be quite yet. Well, speaking of organizing, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up The Adventures of the Monk and the Monarch, which had eight episodes over the course of 2023. The big change that ended up happening was starting to get a bit of structure. We were kind of scattershot early on as far as when we would be doing the um, recording. But since we had it that it's the last Saturday of the month, things have started to take shape. The big thing that got dropped was the opening segment of what are we watching at this time, because it was getting tricky to talk about certain shows that we're watching, especially if we're watching something that's lengthier and ongoing, like how he's been watching a fair amount of One Piece over the last few months. And the answer to what are you watching now is going to be, well, more One Piece on multiple occasions. So <laughs> not a whole lot that can be said on that front. If there is one thing that I'd like to improve in 2024, it has to do with Gaming Monk reviews. And while I did a fair few more impressions than I've done in previous years, I only did 10 reviews for that format this year. And I do want to do more. I realize that's redundant. Everybody wants to do more in a given year. But for me, the big thing is giving myself a structure as far as what to cover next so I'm not dealing with analysis paralysis by using, once again, a wheel. I know it seems like I'm doing that a lot, but it really does help with structuring. Okay, I've got a bunch of different potential projects. Which one am I going to actually focus on? Of course, the bigger problem has been finding a consistent editor. I had John for a while, but because of schedule conflicts at the time, he wasn't able to continue that. We even had a whole contract and all that. We didn't even get a chance to do the how do you want to brew this side project. I had Animane for a while, but he's really busy with his own stuff, so that was out. I even hooked up with Aaron for a couple of ones, and that didn't completely last, although I did enjoy his editing. And although I finally got the video out that Mr. Cake had edited for me when it came to the whole Berserk thing, there was a lot of waiting involved, and while I am a very patient monk, um... I suppose in a roundabout way, that amount of waiting made me a little bit cagey. Uh, obviously, I'd be hesitant about taking up the editing mantle again myself. Mostly because my editing stinks, and I've been very honest about that. But it's more about finding a consistent editor at a reasonable price for what I'm doing. A lot of um, focus on the per, per hour approach, which is not something I like to go with because, because the amount might might vary, and what I'm covering isn't something that demands a excessive amount of effects. This isn't, like, say, a YouTuber cover, covering, um, vid covering videos or covering live stream highlights. There was one other person who I had approached at one point, but they decided that this particular type of video wasn't quite for them. Although they did finish the initial project, they just decided to do it as a freebie because of that conflict. Which, no hard feelings about. I completely understand. This is an unorthodox affair. But if I can get a consistent editor who is willing to go at a reasonable rate, since I've, I've seen some ask for like um, 80 or so dollars for what amounts to a 15-minute lightly edited review where it's focused on an RPG book, and I think a lot of the editors I've been able to come across are doing more typical YouTube editing. The influencer style editing, I should say. And that kind of price might be a little bit out of range for the subject matter. I mean, if I was doing only one review every few months, maybe, but I'm not. Now, moving into that, let's talk about Cloister the Dice. So... We are going to be wrapping up the first full-on season with that soon. After that, there's going to be a roundtable. There's going to be one one-shot with Joel Clark, the guy behind Lone Wolf Fist and another good friend of the temple. 
and afterwards we're going to be moving on to Sword World. Now I'm going to explain why in a future video, but for subsequent seasons after this first one, they will not be on my Kick channel. That is going to be moved over to Twitch. And a video will be worked on to explain why, where you can find it, and any significant changes that are going to happen between seasons. Now, as far as any things that I'd like to do or, or goals for 2024, um, I do want to do more one-off musings. I do like the ones that I did. I mean, yeah, it was just an image and me talking, but it was on topics that I don't think warranted a whole lot of fancy editing. In fact, a lot of stuff I don't think that I do doesn't warrant fancy editing. Um, I do still want to do the How Do You Want to Brew This series. I've had a draft for that in the works for a little while. And I did expand the musing concept to discussions. And that ended up becoming a reaction series kind of by accident. I'm not a reaction channel. I don't plan on being one. The closest thing to that are things like discussing or the hangover shit shows. But I'm not a reaction channel. You're not going to see me do nothing while having a camera in front of me watching random YouTube videos. That kind of thing is better served as a watch party on the Discord server, which I do plan on doing more stuff in that server, including watch parties. So if you haven't joined the server, do join that. That's where I'm going to be hanging out the most. One other thing I will note is that I do plan on making a return to gaming streams, in particular on Twitch. The idea is going to be to multi-stream on my Twitch channel and my gaming-based um, YouTube channel, which so far only has one test stream I did months ago with Coops. But I do hope to do more on that front. And even if I do return to game streaming, it's still going to be within my usual policies. I'm going to be focusing more on hidden gems, whether it be indies of the present or hidden gems of the past. I still have no intention of doing the CODs or the Fortnites or what have you. Um, maybe I'll set up my account again on Final Fantasy XIV and do a bit of catch-up. We will see. Everything is wide open. I'm keeping um, all options under consideration that I reasonably can. I do have a few ideas on what is going to be streamed in January, but I want to keep that a bit of a surprise because... If I lampshade that I'm doing at a certain time, that tends to jinx me. So instead, it's going to be a case of I'm going to be streaming at X date, at X time, and what's going to happen? Well, you'll see. But overall, I think 2023 was a pretty good year. Um, even with stuff like the OGL fiasco and the drama with the Legion, in a roundabout way, I think those were more beneficial to me than anything else because it helped people see the kind of character that I am. Even if some people will have issues with my takes, I think overall the presentation I've given has been able to help show who Mildred is and why he's so dead set certain on his little crusade. So with that said, stay frosty everybody, and here's to 12 more months of this insanity. Bye.